I uh, saw this situation yesterday outside the elevator. Some guy who works here drops change uh, on the floor. For some reason, he gets so embarrassed that he dropped his change all over the place. Mm -hmm. As he's bending down to get it, he lets out a big, all righty then. So for some reason, in his embarrassing moment, he decided to quote the Peck Detective. So I get myself in embarrassing moments all the time. Things that I, but I have never felt the need to just scream out a line from Ace Ventura. So who was the guy? I have no idea. I think he might have been one of the NFL guys. Mm. If I don't know someone here, I just assume they're NFL guys. This is Johnny Unitas. He might as well have yelled out, no, Luke, I'm your father. Or we're going to need a bigger boat. I have no idea why this is his go-to catchphrase. It was so bizarre. It was just, it was just, and, and I, and w if he yelled that out with um, dropping change, I have the feeling everybody in his life is still hearing all righty then from 1994. The cashier at his grocery store must hear all righty then constantly. If this is his go-to uh, catchphrase. Here's uh, Mike. Mike, you're on the Ron Fez show. Yeah, I was wondering, since it's uh, Earth Day, which is the Earth's birthday, and there's a volcano spewing out toxins and carbon emissions, why is the Earth trying to kill itself today? I, uh, just, you just have to think of it as Earth pimples. It's probably not that big a deal to the Earth. They've always had volcanoes. Uh, Will, Will and Charlotte, you're on Fez. Hey, buddies. I wanted to ask Fezzy if it sounded like this when you've been over to help pick up the change. Oh, when I heard already then, I just looked the other way. I just tried to uh, tried to leave the area as soon as possible. Who said the already then? Was Jim Carrey? Yeah, Jim Carrey is Ace Ventura pet detective. So I just moved out, of, and I noticed other people trying to move out of the area, too. And, of course, the guy tried to pick up the change on the run, which means he dropped it again. Just tiny embarrassing moment. Just leave it there. Walk away. Leave your change. It's not going to change the world. Leave your nickel down I, there. I'm trying to figure out what the big humiliating thing was, dropping your change. He seemed to be very embarrassed about dropping his change. Well, if you drop your change, you wouldn't pick it up? Uh, no, I wouldn't pick it up. Dropping things is embarrassing. What if you drop your keys? Those you have to pick up. So tell, tell me why it's embarrassing to drop change. One must always have their change on them at all times? Because what's going to happen is the chain, it's one of the things you drop that you're going to have to chase. And the change is going to hit the ground and it's going to roll and you're going to look like a maniac swerving back and forth trying to uh, figure out where the change is going. I'd rather just let the change go. It's not going to go on forever. Why don't you just wait to see where it stops and then pick it up? Well, it's a, it could be, you know, if you want, it could be like rolling, you know, down a sewer or something. All right, there's a sewer in front of the elevator bank? No, if you dropped it on the sidewalk or something, or it could be rolling into the street, or you're well, not going to be able to follow it. Well, let's go back to this guy yesterday. Mm -hmm. He drops his change. Right. He says, all righty, then he picks his change up. Yeah. You think it's still bothering him today? I think he was, I would, yeah, I think so. The look on his face, I had a feeling it was sticking with him for a while. Mm. Uh, Hicks, does it freak you out if you drop your change? No, I usually don't pick it up. Just let it go? Yeah, fuck it. Listen, I only pick up bills. I won't take my change back from the fucking guy at the 7-Eleven. What am I? I don't have anything I can buy it with. I need folding money. Some chewing gum. Uh, but uh, I, don't, I don't think I get embarrassed if I drop something. Papers are the worst. You drop papers, they're just going everywhere. It's like you've just thrown confetti out there. That's totally embarrassing. And then, and then if they're important papers, then you have to try to catch all of them. 
then you're not only going down on the ground, uh, you're going up in the air. You're all over the place like a spaz. Ryan, Philly, you're my, oops, lost you, buddy. What if you dropped a baby? Would you just act like you didn't drop it? Or would you yell, all righty then, and pick it up? The baby you have to pick up. The papers are humiliating because it's then it's like those things like a, take a life of their own. Like as soon as you're up on it, then the paper will take off again. Um, here's um, let's go to Kevin Boston. Hey, what's going on, guys? Yeah. Hey, listen, I think um, I think the level of embarrassment depends on the level of weight that you're carrying. If you've got a big fat belly, you got to get over to get to the change. It's pretty embarrassing, but if you can just bend down and pick up a penny or two, you're going to be fine. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. So, and, of course, if you lose a hat and it's blowing away, that's a nightmare. Miller's Crossing. Oh, I didn't even see that. But it's, it's again, it's like the object is going to war against you where it wants to get away. Ryan, you're on run of Fez. Hey, uh, Fez, what if your dick fell off? Would that be worth picking up? It's not going to happen. Oh, it would so happen. Come on, especially yours, if it's still there. It's there, and it's not going to roll away. So it's, uh, if you have, um... Now, actually, speaking of change... We were. We were just sitting here speaking of change. Um, got some... Uh, going to the snack machine, got an extra thing of uh, change from uh, buying what? something out of the snack machine. Got extra change back from the snack machine. Uh, is this a theme show all about the change today? Because yeah. I've, uh, I just... I feel like we've now become one of those NPR shows where they just look at something from every angle. It's... Uh, well, it's it was something that um, that reminded me of it. Okay. So it's uh, it's where that uh, you get extra change coming out of the snack machine that you're supposed then you're supposed to get. Just a meaningless but great victory. It's not going to change your life, but it's something fantastic that ha- that makes you feel good. So what if the change came out, hit the ground? Then would it be humiliating? The change just comes out but hits the floor. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, we're talking about change with Fez Watley today. Every which way you can look at change. Uh, here's Madonna. You're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, how you guys doing today? Yeah. Good. Hey, listen. I just think this. You should just bend over, pick it up, be proud. Everybody drop stuff. I'm not going to do it. As if I don't need it, I'm not going to pick it up. It's not going to happen. It's just too awkward. I'd rather keep going and act like it didn't happen. Like when you have that trip in the sidewalk that you don't expect. I don't want to look back and try to find out the cause. If there was a pothole or something or a stick there. I think you stepped on some change. I think you actually slipped on change. But I just, I just, you want to get away from the moment as soon as possible. Tom, you're on Ronda Fez. Hey, Rondo. It's amazing to me how Fez projects his insecurities onto other people. That guy didn't give a shit about this. He bent over, he picked up his chains. He's happy as a lark today. Uh, poor, poor, sad Fez. Just kill him, Ron. Get that hammer. Just. I will not do that. Thank you. So you were going to tell us, Fez, about uh, change from around the world, different types of change, breaking things down. Uh, let's go over here to, uh, I'll just uh, hop on line eight. You're on the run of Fez show. Yeah, what happened if uh, Fez drops his toenails? If it was the collection, I would go back and get them. Because I've spent too much time putting my toenail collection together. And it would feel bad if I lost it. Feel a little unnerving. Uh, Alan, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, buddy. Yeah. 
I was wondering if uh, Fez had a great therapist appointment. That cat is on fire today. Suck a dick, Fez. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. You have uh, come in with a bowl of uh, just a bunch of energy on you today, Fez. You had the change story, Mm -hmm. and then you also got some more change out of the snack machine. Right. Yeah, those were just some things that, you know, we're trying to think of some good things going on. Thinking of some good things going on? Trying to. As opposed to what? As opposed to, like the guy mentioned, a therapy session. You had that last night? Um, uh, yeah, I had, yeah. Was it last night? The I night don't know. Be- night before. Banner and change? Uh, Ryan, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, what if you're in Canada, you drop a loony or a toonie, then we're not just talking pennies and dimes here. Would you pick it up? What do you mean by that, Fez, loonies and toonies? Oh, that's what they call their, uh, they get their Let's change say- there. Um, Marty, South Carolina. Ronnie, you got to get Fezzy laid. Please, please just get him laid. I'm, a, I'm trying to get him to collect his change, wait for it, take it to the bank, and then uh, at a certain point be able to pay for a prostitute. Larry, Long Island, you're on running Fez. Hey, uh, I thought Fez needed a change. Fez? Different kind of change. Uh... 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Here's uh, Joe. You're on Run of Fez. Yeah, Ron. Yeah. If Fez dropped that horrible wig, you think he'd bend over to pick it up? Um, Fez? By the time I was done with that, I think it could walk away on its own. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Here's John, North Carolina. Bloody... So, Fez, free change in the vending machine's a victory. Maybe you wanted this guy to just leave his change on the ground so you could pick it up. Would that have been a victory for you, Fez? Um, I wouldn't have picked it up. There was too many witnesses there. If you see a penny, do you pick it up, and then all day long it brings you luck? I have no idea whether it's supposed hmm? I have no idea whether it's supposed to be heads or tails. I don't know which one the good luck is. Heads. How does anyone not know that heads is good luck? Uh, Paul, New Jersey. You're on running Fez. Hey, Fez, if you dropped a uh, lettuce wrap, would you pick that up? Man, I don't want to get back into the lettuce wrap story. Although, I think that if you save all your lettuce wraps and then take them to the bank, they give you a big salad. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, Jimmy, New Jersey. You're on running Fez. Hey, buddy. Um, if you drop something and don't pick it up, wouldn't that be littering technically? So Fez would be a common criminal. It's, uh, I don't think it's litter if someone else is going to come by and grab it. You, you grabbed it? No, I didn't grab it, but I'm sure somebody would have. If I drop, if I drop it, someone's going to come by and get it. It falls under the same heading of, uh, leaving a newspaper there at the airport. Someone's going to come by and use that. What are you wincing about, Dave? No, I'm just, I'm confused about all this. I didn't know he, he thought so much about change. But it's interesting. I do like it. I mean, I just, I've never, I never thought of change like this before. I noticed a couple of things about change yesterday, you said, Dave. I, you're making me rethink my, my opinions of change. I think he's got an HBO special coming his way. Any more change stuff? No, I don't have any more change stuff. Sam Worthington from Avatar, he's, um, he may be the new James Bond if Daniel Craig doesn't come back to the franchise. Why wouldn't he? Uh, there's a dispute right now, I think, with MGM where the, la- the, the next Bond movie has been put on hold indefinitely. So Daniel Craig may walk away from it altogether. Yeah, I think there's little chance of that happening. I think there's little chance Daniel Craig doesn't want to do the next one. He's like, seriously, give me a call. I don't care what studio has it. How could this studio turn around and lose this franchise? They're in some sort of financial problem. Ah, 
where I see where they're having a lot of trouble. They can't get this thing uh, off the ground, so and, it's been postponed forever now. Yeah. Uh, here's Corey. Corey, you're on the Run and Fish show. I know this is, is exciting, but can we go for, back to the change talk for a second? What do you got? Here's uh, Kevin in Calgary. You're uh, on hey, face. Hey, Ron Fest. Yeah. Hey, uh, yeah, in Canada, we have change or $1 and $2 bills, so we don't have bills. We just have change. So what if you drop uh, $2, uh, $2 uh, worth of change? Fez? Um, what you would do is you would, uh, you would just have to cash it in. Well, a handful of change could be 15 bucks. Right. Well, they now these banks have these change counters where you just throw it in the bin. No, if you dropped it on the ground, would you bend over and get it? No, I'm leaving it alone. I told you I don't pick up change. I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. Uh, where, where it's it's just embarrassing for me. What is to pick up the change. Mark, New Hampshire. You're on Run of Fez. Uh, it's Mark. Sorry, Ron. Um, yeah. Pennies. I throw pennies away. What are your thoughts on that? Mike, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hello, me? Yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, listen, here's one you don't even have to bend over for. All right, 1989, phone companies. They had the phone. Uh, phone uh, here I go. The uh, phone's in the back. You get your change back from using a public phone. You keep that or you leave that in the phone? That you would keep. That's not on the ground. That's not That's not having to bend over and pick something up. Uh, Danny, you're on the Run of Fez show. Danny, go ahead, buddy. Hey, what's up? I just wanted to know if uh, Fez would uh, bend over to pick a load in his ass. That has nothing to do with what I was talking about. Uh, Chris, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, I didn't really want to talk to Fez. I just wanted a prize because he was crying. What's going on? Because you came in like at a really high point, and then you got upset again. What's going on? Um, just struggling today. Panicky day. Where it was, I was trying to overcompensate for it. With what? With trying to come in a little bit louder, a little bit more energetic. A little louder, a little prouder. That's what I was trying to do. Dave, you're telling me those are the days that you look out for? When Dave, when Fez comes in with the kind of manic talk? Yes. Because we don't know which way it could go. It's... You know, you, you you don't. It's like the smoke monster. Is he up, down? Is he a tree? Is he Jack's father? I don't know. He's sometimes he's Jack's father. Sometimes he's smoke monster. Sometimes he's Locke. Right, and that's what's. What's you today, Fez? I think I'm. I have no idea. I think I'm Locke today. What? The lock in the in the casket. Um, eight six six run zero Fez. Eight six six run zero Fez. Uh, Ronnie in New Orleans. Hey, guys. Fez. Yes, sir. Uh, you might want to start picking up that change, buddy. You never know. One day, you might get lucky while you bent over. You know, if you collect that change and send it over to those people that help Africans, they can buy those African kids cups of coffee in 1958. So you were, you were doing all the change talk because you felt a little manic? I guess, so. yeah. I mean, I, I think I was trying to make myself feel a little bit more manic where I was just trying to go way up uh-huh. because I was having another panic day. Why? What's going on? I don't know where it came from. It was just... Was this before the change? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is so, it from that all righty then guy? Did that start it? No, I mean... Did he remind you of anybody, or what happened? 
No, I, I just thought that... No, I figured, all right, just go ahead and tell that story. It just seemed bizarre enough to tell. To me. And... And then... So I was just trying to really get myself way up, so... To get away from the, uh... The, the, the bad feeling? The bad feeling. Thank you. Uh, here's Troy and Windsor. You're on my face. Uh, hey, guys. I was just wondering, Fezzy, when you're washing your clothes, do you take change out of the washing machine? I will take it out of there if it's rattling around. I don't want strange change in with my clothes being washed. Oh, uh, you're back into the change talk again. Right. I feel like I got stuck in the change mode here. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, Sean, Cincinnati. What up, Ronnie? Yeah. Hey, Fez, if you punch a f retarded girl in the stomach, would you pick up change? I didn't get that. When I was younger, uh, I in my neighborhood, I punched a f uh, retarded girl in her fat stomach. Basically on a neighborhood dare. Because uh, everyone teased this girl in the neighborhood, and... Mm -hmm. Her mother, there was a group of kids teasing her, and her mother said, why don't you just punch her in the stomach then? See. And gave permission to punch her in the stomach, and I was egged on by the kids in the neighborhood to punch her. So you, you punched the special needs kid? Yes. Now, as somebody who used to tease myself, I used to tease people and egg people on, mm -hmm. you know who we would always egg on? Who's that? The special needs kid. So basically, some mean kid went home during dinner through his cruel laughter, was telling his older brother, I got a retard to punch a, punch a retard today. Just so you can take a step back uh -huh. and see the full story. Uh, here's Dan in Scranton. You're on Run of Fez. Hey, everybody. Uh, Fez, I got a scenario for you. Um, you're sucking dick through a glory hole. All right. And, uh, and you got your rubber. You drop that on the floor. Uh, do you let the guy go bareback, or uh, do you pick the rubber off the floor and wrap it up before he puts it in your ass? None of the above. You mad at him? Yeah. Here's uh, Dan. Dan in Florida. You're on my Fez. Hey, Fezzy, would you bend over to have your ass crack hose out by your dad? Hey, cheer up, buddy. We love you, man. Fatty pneumonia. Don't let anything get you upset. What do you care? Here is um, here's, uh, Kevin, Atlanta. Hey, Fezzy, how you doing there, partner? Doing all right. Why are you so down, man? What's going on with you? Sounds like today you started off. And then all of a sudden, yeah, you came in high. We were all we all took a step back. We're like, wow, Fez is telling a lot of different stories, fast and furious. And then all of a sudden, you you got upset. Yeah, I just went into a panic thing. It was just. I, don't, I thought, if I could be honest here, I thought you were kind of setting up like one of those themed HBO specials. Uh, Ricky Gervais does it. Well, he'll just talk about one topic, and your topic today was going to be change. Yeah, that wasn't my plan. Why not? It's a good topic. Yeah, it didn't seem like anyone wanted to talk about it as much as I did. We were all talking about it. I mean, I did f find it somewhat peculiar that you went from one topic about change into another one. And then I felt that, too. And But I but that's fine. And I got weird about it. About what? Um, Going from one change topic to the next. Yeah. And I got weird about it. And then started to panic. I've never been one of those people. Uh, I have friends who will save like things of change at home, like in a bowl. You do that, Dave? Yeah. I, like a bucket of change and then take it to the bank at one time. Yep. I have a smiley face that says, have a nice day on it. And then I'll bring it to the, the, the coin star in the A&P. It's a, it's a special day. It's a treat. We don't have any A&Ps here. You must live so far south. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I do. You must live south of Philly. I, uh, I almost. 
But I'm telling you, Fez, the coin star, it's a fun little thing because you put all your change in. Next thing you know, you can buy like, you know, four or five Snickers at a time. I, I love it. Every Sunday. 866-RUN-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RUN-ZERO-FEZ. Um, Chris, PA, you're on running Fez. Hey, buddy. Hey, Fez. I, I was wondering if you've ever considered maybe getting some exercise to help with your panic attacks. I know that really helped me. I was going through the same thing, man. You'd rather panic, right? I think this is your exercise. Well, uh, my problem is with the uh, with the heart thing. I exercise is also something that makes me panic. Mm. All right, why don't we do this? Let's go to a break. Okay. A little cold water. A nice little glass of cold water. We come back. We'll reboot. Okay. Earth Day 2.0. 2.0. How's that sound, pal? Sounds good. Uh, when we get back, Fez wants to talk about paper money. Personally, I like those hundreds. Normally, what I like to do, Fez, is have a stack of ones, uh-huh. wrap 100 on the outside, rub, then a rubber band around it. That's what my mom told me to do one time. She said, all, Your she said, mom wants you to go pimping. She said all the people in Riverdale used to do that. Yeah. I said, I. I don't live in New York. <laughs> I'm in the Jersey suburbs. Give By the way, wallet. neither did she up there in Riverdale. <laughs> All right? It might as well be Yonkers. Yeah, but she spent time in Manhattan all the time. Uh, right back, run a fest show. It's the run a fest show, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, Dave, I got the joke. I get it. Change. There's a cash register, though. I'm sorry. We're really just fucking around a little bit. Does that help when guys start just teasing you about it, or does it make it worse? Fest? It makes it a little bit worse. Because, like I said, I try to get past the situations as soon as I can. Right. And uh, when, you know, go to commercial break, come back, hear the cash register, hear the song... Yeah, it takes me backward. It pulls me right back where I was. Well, what about the philosophy, though? It's like guys just fooling around like none of it matters. Um, In other words, they're just teasing, having fun, and then you roll with it. It doesn't feel like teasing. Yeah. It doesn't feel like just normal, you know, hanging out, ball busting. Right. How's it feel? It feels like, all right, here's the best way to get them crying again. Hmm. Here's the way. To, here, what See, can Dave, we come up with, Dave? Let me let me even ask you a question. Why, when he had that moment and his yeah. voice cracked again, do I look over and you're giggling? No, I'm giggling because of the song um, that's still playing. There, there was, you know, all the the change that we hear at the beginning of that song made me chuckle, and then I think about it, and I think that was real fun. That there's so much change, and I chuckle. Uh huh. Yes, because it's not ball busting. It's you trying to get me back in this state. Is what it is. I that wasn't my attention. I was just playing. Look, Dave. Why don't you just punch him in the stomach if that's what you're after? <laughs> I'm not after that. See, I went full. If, yeah. If you want to, my mother will get permission. Was it your mother who told you to punch the kid? No. No. The kid's mother. The kid's mother said, why don't you just punch her in the stomach? So that woman must have been awful. I think she was mentally challenged as well. Wow. Or another word they have for that is Floridian. You there find, are a bunch of hanging chads down there. You find a lot of it there. So you don't think that Dave teases you think he's really out to hurt you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think Dave actually does like you, though. I do. I don't think so. I've been having these dreams lately where it's um, it's insane. It's like I'm getting killed in all of these dreams mm. where I'm getting shot at, I'm getting kidnapped, um, I'm getting pushed into traffic. It's very, very odd, the, the a series of dreams I've been having and going through. Well, that's interesting because there's, if there's one thing people love to hear about, it's other people's dreams. You ever notice that if you try to tell somebody a dream, you see them starting just like fold away on you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Um, the the weird part in this dream is, well, with this series of dreams, here's the odd thing about it. It's a different minority in each dream. So in the in one dream it's a it's a black guy killing me. In another dream it's an Asian guy. I've had an Arab guy try to kill me and kidnap me. It's uh, it's very strange why the minorities are attacking me in my dreams. You should stay away from the the uh, United Nations. I don't go anywhere near it. it just seems like the the world is out to get you or something. Dave's out to get me is what it is. With the shots that he takes. I think but, I think what he does, Fez, is sometimes try to bring some levity to it because it gets a little uncomfortable. Yeah, but I think he I think what happens is he goes for things that I he knows are going to just get me. I think, I think he feels uncomfortable. It's normally uncomfortable for a man to be around another man that's crying. I understand, but I think he goes. He goes, but he takes it beyond any sort of just fun teasing. So, what would be a fun tease? Um, I'm not sure at this point, but I mean, I know playing money coming back isn't the way to go about it. What if he would have played changes? Still, I think he, I think he needs to realize that when I, there's a certain spot where nothing, it's, it's all going to hurt no matter what he's doing. Like playing this song. Still don't know what I was waiting for, and my time. Eight six six Ron Zero Fez. Eight six six Ron Zero Fez. Ron Bennington, Fez Watley, on an Earth Day. Uh, Dave, you uh, teach the kids anything about Earth Day? Uh, yeah, I teach them to throw their apple cores in the yard. <laughs> See, that's good. You're Johnny Appleseed. That's the way I feel. Here, I'll play a song for me. I actually had a uh, question about you too, Dave, where people were asking, "What do?" We, what would you consider a redhead? They said uh, in this email, does it just have to be red hair? Do they, have, but or to be really at one with you, do they need watery eyes, freckles, and pale skin? I believe it's a red hair um, and a sensitive skin combo. Uh, is the way I've always felt. So just a guy with red hair, you don't even consider one of your own. If he's like a dark skin, and believe it or not, there are those out there. I've seen a couple Italian guys that have kind of auburn hair, and they're they're tanned, and people don't even regard them as red hairs. You know, it's always the fucking weird skin. I see. So if you see a guy who just, he's tan, has red hair, you're like, he's not even with us. There was a guy in high school, his name was Scott, and he got the, he was going out with this really hot blonde chick. Mm -hmm. And I thought, like, oh, we're the same person. Right. But he, he, had, he, he had the ability to get a great tan and happened to have red hair, and he was not looked at as a red hair. People were like, he's blonde hair with red highlights. No, he was a redhead, same hair color as me. He just could get a tan. I couldn't. Now I only think of you as your Dave puppet. You had that up on a Twitio yesterday. Yeah. And, it's difficult. Uh, yeah. It's difficult. By the way, uh, 202 Friends is getting complaints from somebody that you have blocked from your site. I guess they, she must have said something cruel to you or whatever. Yeah, if you, you blocked her. If you monkey but around. She says that since I bring up your site on the show, it's keeping her from getting everything she expects from the show. Well, don't go on the, um, the Eastside Dave account and well, bash me. Let me get the person's name. Okay. I want to look it up for you, and maybe I want you to take a little time to look it over, and maybe this is just a suspension and not an expulsion for her. I'll reflect upon it. Um, I want to get that name for you, but 866-RUN-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RUN-ZERO-FEZ. Here's Trevor. Uh, hey, guys, what's going on? What can we do for you, buddy? I was just calling to say, yeah, there's a big difference between uh, just a redhead and the ginger. Like, my girl's got that nice cherry red hair, 
no pale skin and freckles and all that. But Dave, on the other hand, is definitely a dirty ginger. All right, so uh, you're going to agree with that, Dave? I don't agree with that. I'm dirty, but I understand. Do you what consider he's yourself a ginger? Yeah, I, that's a slur. That's like saying, but that, I consider myself of the redheaded fraternity. Yeah. But so the ginger would be a G word. Yes, it is a G word, and right. I'm, lo- I'm I'm hoping it will be yet another word that gets censored in in 2010 America. Eight six six Ron Zero Fez. Eight six six Ron Zero Fez. You're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey Dave, um, do you consider black people with red hair and freckles and light skin what we call red bones, uh, redheads too? Um, I don't consider them. I mean, to say Malcolm X was a redhead because obviously he had red hair that w- that would be ridiculous. Um, well, so there's no such thing as a black no, ginger. Absolutely not. Yeah, there is. But my mom has no. red hair and has freckles and. and is real I know they skin. exist. I'm saying we don't call them redheads. We still say that's a black guy. You no, know, fucking no. Sinbad. Sin, Sin, Sinbad's like a redheaded black man. But we don't say, yeah, hey. So he's redhead. Why are you being racist? Why are you kicking us you out? You really are coming on. Who says Sinbad? Look at that redheaded guy, Sinbad. Jay, can I, can I tell you the ginger? I heard him say that, and to me, it's one of the worst things you could say. That was in confidence. Yeah. Uh, but if you're going to be black, why add to it with red hair? Right. It's ridiculous. Like I said, Sinbad or those Here's, here's another person retarded. I understand, the, the black Asians. Come on, everything you have to do? It's too much. It's like running into a fish with wings. It's just, you, you can't do everything. And you're not sure what type of slur to throw at them. Uh, Mike, in Toronto, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Yeah, Ron, would you say Dave would be a, a red bino and not an albino, a red bino? Fuck you. But you do have a red bino look about you, Dave. No, I'm not a red bino. I'm not an albino, as four black guys called me at White Castle ten years ago. They go, look at that albino, pointed at me and laughed. Um, I'm not any of those things. I am a red-haired American. Pure and simple. Me and Dale Earnhardt Jr. All right. The person's name that you've blocked is Anne's Budro. Anne's Budro. Okay. I'll, I'll look at some of the um, things in the past. They also said that when you block someone on Twitter, it's similar to saying this person is spreading lies about you. And uh, Dave is alienating Ron and Fez fans. Surprise. No, not because really. Because I can't see, they can't see the Twitio just discussed. Ah. Uh. Tough, tough shit. How about that? The, the point is that's my Twitter account, and probably what this person did was go on my account and fucking insult me or insult my children. Because I don't fucking just ban people for no reason. So, you know, they should behave a little so bit. So you do have uh, rules. Rules for the it, it, Eastside Dave account. It's pretty loose. Don't go over the line. Don't yeah. don't don't call my kids retarded. So normally enough. you play it fast and loose over there. It's it's kind of yeah. organized chaos. But you like there are lines that you can cross. Right. I'm like Maverick from Top Gun. I play yeah. by the seat of my pants, man. Because I I don't see your site as a controversial site. I go over and I. Uh, I laugh very hard at the Dave Puppet stuff that you do. What What happens is people will be like, "How is this guy a father of retarded kids?" And so then that person gets banned. So you will ban someone for saying that you're retarded or your children are retarded? Children are retarded. So as long as it's just aimed at you, you don't care. Well, if it's aimed at me to a certain point. It is my account. I don't need to fucking take anything. I understand. My so account. It's a strict place. It's not loosey-goosey <laughs> over there. <laughs> I'm the it's, flip-flops. I say it's very regimented. It's and just the opposite of what I just said. This place is very close to Annapolis. <laughs> I mean, you have got to come in there and you're dressed whites. You're on the Ron and Fez show, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. How you doing, Eddie? You're on, you're on the air. What's up, Ronnie? Would yeah. you refer to Eastside Dave as a wino-bino? Uh, would you consider yourself a wino-bino? I enjoy wine, but I'm not, I don't like the name bino. In any fucking way. Thank uh, you. All right, here. Um, can I get into it? Yeah, go ahead. I, hey, uh, did you just say, can I get a what, what? <laughs> so my um, the, my my wife is at the uh, supermarket with, with my daughter. All and, fucked up. And this woman comes up to her and says, oh, what beautiful hair. I always wanted a girl with red hair. And my wife goes, yes, my husband passed down the tray to her. The woman either not hearing or ignoring or not caring, says to my wife, yeah, I want, though, a red-headed girl. I don't want a red-headed boy. They have it tough enough. 
Mm. You know, it's tough for those redheaded boys. They're kind of weird looking. So you and your son. Well, my wife is staying there just saying, you know, I just told you my husband's redheaded. And, and that's how commonplace but it is. But your Dave puppet looks exactly like you. Yes. It's almost like you're not a human anymore. Well, since I grew, uh, drew in the beard. John, you're on the Run and Fez show. My name is. Uh, usually black guys with freckles and that kind of red hair, they're, they're called red bones. I don't know where exactly it comes from, but I know a lot of black people, and they call them red bones. Now, are you familiar with this, Dave, uh, red bones? I'm familiar with Leon red bones. Uh-huh. Uh, that, <laughs> no, no, no. Do, 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 do. Um, they usually like women as red bones. They, they see, here's, what, here's, here's the only thing that I really get mad about. It's when black people have things that we don't know about. And it takes us too long to find out because I, I obviously if you grew up in America on some level, you're you're in love with black culture. And I was really happy about it until they I found out that they say that white people smell like wet dogs and you can actually Google this. Yeah. And see how many people talk about it. The fact that white people and we can't smell it, but we smell like wet dogs um and all you got to do is google and do white people um smell and the, as soon as you get to white people sm it comes up white people smell like wet dogs <laughs> as the number one search there's actually even why why do white people smell like wet dogs when they come that really bothers me I had no idea this. Yeah, and that's that's just not accurate. Pat, you're on Rana Fez. Hey, uh, I want to know if Dave would rather be called Irish American or Ginger Honky. What bothers you, Dave? Ginger Honky obviously bothers me more. Now, than Irish when you American. have a family reunion and the whole McDonald clan gets together, why does it look like an AA meeting? Why does it just look like people? Struggling to keep it together. Phil, PA, you're on Fez. Hey, guys, what's up? Uh, yeah. It's Phil. Um, what do you call somebody who's redheaded and left-handed? What's that? What, what do you call it? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> I am both a redhead and a southpaw. I don't know. Are I, you really? Yes, yeah. I am, Phil. Oh, jeez. I said this many times on the air. He's oh. talked about it before. By the way, Franklin just uh, texted me and said that Gina is a red bone, and he's very well familiar with the term. Does she dye her hair? Because I thought she had black hair, but I could see it with her complexion. She's got kind of a Malcolm X complexion. She reminds me of that guard that used to play for the Celtics. Oh, um... I'm trying to think of his name. I think he just died a couple years ago. Yeah, he did. Dennis, uh, Dennis, DJ, Dennis Johnson. Dennis Johnson. I don't know why I couldn't remember his yeah, name. Yeah, that was... Because he, he, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, that guy. Yeah, he was a weird And he had freckles. Team. Yeah, he did. Ugliest team in basketball, A6 Celtics. Really? You think they were the all-time ugliest? Oh, come on. Larry, Mikhail? Larry's number one, the worst-looking man probably in sports history. But it's hard to pick out the ugliest team in basketball and not have Bill Walton on that team. <laughs> he was a bench guy, though, for the A6 team. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so he's there. You're right. I forgot. So and he, he was six man. Actually, he played a, a really big part. Yeah, he that. was good. He was a good six. I think he might have even won six man of the year that year. That was his he last. Was, he was terrific. That was a great team. Yeah, and McHale was hideous. Ainge was like considered good looking, and that's sad. Yeah, you, know, you look at him; he's a fucking freak. Well, I think Ainge probably would have been better looking if he wasn't always so pissy. He had like a a, a fucking look on his face, like he just sucked a lemon. Yeah, and he had a weird. Bart Simpson spiked hair thing that didn't work. And then Parrish, of course, their center was awful. 866 runs zero fez. 866 runs zero fez. See, one of my phobias is if I'm staring at somebody. And here's the thing not looking at. See, I could take looking at somebody and it feels like they think I'm staring. So, I mean, like, if you're. Like, big fear, like, if you get caught staring at a handicapped person. Where And they're looking back, where it's like, you're not staring at them, like, in any sort of derogatory way. You just maybe think, oh, my gosh, that guy gets around really well in a wheelchair. Or is, you know, if I needed a wheelchair, would that be the kind I would want? Or would I get one of those scooters? Greg, you're on the Run of Fez show. 
Uh, yes, sir, Mr. B. Did, yeah. Uh, did it bother Dave that uh, he's living proof the uh, Irish fucked the buffalo when they first came over? Wow, there's like I like mean, Western jokes that I don't even get. Yeah, I mean, what the fuck does that even mean? Uh, I don't have a tail. Davy Mac is tailless. Um, I don't think buffaloes have tails, do they? I thought they had like a little nub. Maybe. Uh, Tom, you're on a fez. Hey, fellas, how are you? Yeah. What can we do for you, pal? Hey, uh, Red Bone on the Cleveland Cavaliers. Look him up. Delonte West. Strange, strange looking guy. And, a, and I believe a lefty as well. So he's got the weird lefty redhead thing going. By the way, you were nemesis last night, uh, Dave. Uh, the kid that you grew up with that's now on ESPN. Tony Reale. Uh Bragging about Fordham. Oh, yeah, I saw that. You watch everything he does, Reale? Um Sometimes I watch it just to get angry. You... Some, sometimes just to get really, really pissed off. Uh, yeah, I have to watch him. Just to see where this little uh, accent's going today. Because he's from Marlboro, New Jersey. He pretends now he's from, you know, um, fucking, you know, uh, Saturday Night Fever. I want to see if he's going to go full-on Italian. Hey, it's a Tony Reale here. Uh, Dean, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Dean? Yeah. Yeah, how you doing, Ronnie? Um, any team like 85 Cardinals, Willie McGee, uh, Jack Clark, those are the two of the ugliest guys I've seen. <laughs> All right. It's, we're, we're going around different sports for ugly teams. Willie McGee was pretty bad. <laughs> um, Tim, you're on Ron and Fez. Jim? Yeah. Hey, yeah. What about uh, so he's on Delonte West? He's uh, he's a redhead, a black guy, and he's got red tattooed on his arm. Mm. Yeah, we just mentioned that. We did bring that up. Oh, that's so him. He also and, says uh, we smell like wet dogs. No, yeah, we smell like wet dogs. I actually uh, was talking with the uh, black guys I used to work with. They didn't say we smell like wet dogs. They actually said we smell like baloney. So see, that hurts too. Baloney and wet dogs. These aren't pleasant things. I like to think that we smell like lilacs. Let's take a break here. Back in just a couple moments.